Hey guys and welcome to my first travel vlog. After a long journey from Germany via Dubai to New Zealand I finally made it to Auckland from where I drove like 250 kilometers to the town of Rotorua. Here I am now in the Maori village and come with me as we explore the village and the Geothermal Park. If you can spell and pronounce the red name, you're an absolute genius. Here in Wakarevareva, a lot of geothermal activities and uh, thus there's a lot of smoke and you can even smell the uh, sulfur.
as you can see here is a lot of geothermal activity and the water is pretty hot. I wouldn't touch it. So we are now walking through a trail for about one hour in the geothermal village and after that we will enjoy a tour through the Maori village and after that there is a cultural performance with a traditional haka dance. Here's so much smaller smoke you can't even see like one or two meters. The smell of the sulfur is really very, very strong. I have nothing smelled anything like this before. I once smelled it in Japan and I smelled it also in Iceland, but it wasn't so strong as it is here.
along the trail you can see a lot of crafted Maori art. So we climbed up a small hill to have a very, very scenic view about the Hould geothermal village and also later on onto the Maori village. some other handcrafted Maori art. Over there you can see the Maori village where we are now going to have the tour. So here like weddings, birthdays, anniversaries. We also have pangi, which is funerals. When we bring the body in here for three days, it's never left alone. And then on the third day, the body is taken out of the um, ancestral house up for burial. So it's a place where of, of multi um, gathering. When there is a, a funeral procession taking place, normally there'll be a flag flying on this pole. To the the mm -hmm. Now there's probably uh, approximately about 70 people there. There used to be hundreds, but a lot of the generations there are... ...by families. It is communal cooking. So if one box is full, move to the next one. Traditionally, we will cook with flax woven baskets. Today, the pots and pans. But if you want to avoid doing dishes, aluminium foil... Hoped, prodded, questioned about longevity, what effects it has on our people living in an environment like this. Well, I'm glad to announce it has no effect. Our people are living well into their 80s, 90s with no health effects. It is steam we're inhaling, not sulphur. Sulphur cannot develop at boiling points. So There are five active geysers on the terrace. The water and steam now rising from the front of the terrace where that bridge is located, Kereru, a name of a bird, wood pigeon. 
on top of the geyser terrace is the location of two active geysers. You can see one erupting right now. We oh, call yes, Prince yes. of Wales Feathers. <coughs> we used to call Te Tohu Indicator when it reached a height. Of and that's our genealogy are told through the panels. We have carvings of the woman. They're inside the house along with the chiefs. The males are on the outside for protection. And the difference between a male and female carving. Women do not protrude their tongue. Now features starting with the head. To our people, most sacred part of the body. We never had a written language. Not until our first Māori MP, Sir Apiranga Ngata. He's on our $50 note. He's the gentleman who formatted our language, how it's written today. For us before him, the carvings, the houses were our writing, even the markings on the faces. We call tamako. So the men, they had the full face markings. The woman, mokokowai, the lips and chin, representing status, genealogy, accomplishments. Now when it came to genealogy, one side of the face, your father's history. Other side, your mother's. Accomplishments from the eyelids down. Knowledge from the eyelids up. As well as singing, dancing, our language. Now traditionally, the tāmoko was cut into the face. Not like today, with the tattoo gun drawn on the face. Now next feature, facial expression. Enlarged eyes, protruding tongue. Act of defiance <coughs> before our men did battle, performing the haka, stamping their feet on the ground, slapping their legs, chest, arms, stimulating the body, as well as the facial expressions. So every muscle, including eyes and tongue, were used. Hopefully, when confronting the enemy, they take fright, turn, run, no battle would take place. So the haka, to prepare the warrior mentally, physically, spiritually for battle. Now repeat after me, haka. haka. Ha, to breathe, ka, fire, breath of fire. Those are the words that get spit out each time the haka is performed. In battle, he should be able to manoeuvre around his opponent, strike him at the head and with a simple twist, remove his temple. We even had a weapon called kutiati, liver extractor. Well, we couldn't think to the musket folks, because we didn't believe that one was called Hanuka. The one that's not in flower, the flowers in October, that's how we know it's spring summer. That one we call Manuka. You can expect honey. Well, I did, because my grandparents are still Catholics. But I went to the Anglican Church, only because my cousins attended that church. It's protectors, ones without weapons, guardians. Get a little bit excited at times. That's nearly your thunder. They lost everyone now. It's all about the dog. It's all about the dog, isn't it? Especially that one. <laughs> Our first <coughs> argument, the gate should have been on their bridge. 
for them to access the geysers. They need to come across the bridge. They wouldn't listen.
This was the cultural experience at the meet, uh, Maori village here in Wakareware with the traditional haka dance and some more dances. And uh, yeah, now we are leaving the Maori village and we are going to the tree walk high above the trees. Come with us and enjoy. So we just arrived at the tree walk, going up to 20 meters and then across some bridges around the trees. Oh my gosh, it's shaking like like hell. The way is very narrow. So these are Californian redwood trees and they are the tallest living trees on earth reaching over 150 meters in high. As you may see or not see it's really shaking a lot. The way is very narrow so my shoulders are always touching the rope. Ooh. At least I can't fall down because there's everywhere a net. I wish the camera had a smell recorder. The smell here is just awesome.
Oh, we can even go higher over there. Our first bridge, which is, which is not so narrow like the last one. Tallest tree on the walk. You can also book a night ticket for the tree walk and then all trees are illuminated with lights. This will also be illuminated during the night.
saw that it, this was the tree walk. It took about 30 to 40 minutes to walk around all these bridges. And yeah, let's continue to our next destination. So this is our hotel room here in Rotorura. We have a small kitchen. A very large and comfortable room and bed. A nice bathroom with a clean shower and toilet. And of course a nice terrace. Let me open it up. And look what we here have. Some alpacas. So that's it for today, see you soon for another travel vlog from me.